Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Tech Podcast Roundtable. My name is Todd Cochran, and I'm one of your hosts. I have Jeffrey Powers from geekazine.com on board as well. Jeffrey, good, uh, good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. I think, is it morning or afternoon? Uh, morning for you, afternoon for me. Yeah, that's a, that's the beauty of time zone difference, right? <laughs> hey, folks, we, yeah. we've got a great show lined up for you today. We're going to be, uh, Jeffrey's going to be talking about the importance of having uh, good show notes with your podcast. And I'm going to be talking about uh, basically some of the very basic stuff on podcasting on elements that you need to have on the front of your website and so people can get subscribed uh, and and basically uh, connect to all this great content that you're creating. But I want to take uh, just a minute, of course, and remind you that we're part of the Tech Podcast Network over at techpodcast.com, 140 or so family-safe shows that uh, produce a variety of tech content and a variety of different topics. So definitely check them out at techpodcast.com. Of course, again, my name is Todd Cochran. I am over at geeknewscentral.com. I do a twice-weekly tech show called Geek News Central, and then I have a Saturday morning show that I do every Saturday morning called Saturday Morning Tech. Real original on those names there. And then the Chrome Show, which is a show that I do periodically based upon the Chrome operating system in the Chromebook. Jeffrey, what you got going on over at, at Geekazine? Oh, tons of stuff. We have the Geek Smack, the, re the regular show, happens every single Tuesday. We've got iPad 365. And, of course, uh, I just, uh, just celebrated my fifth year as Geekazine. Uh, opened the doors on November 7th of, uh, of 2007. So, uh, And then uh, the new website, how to record, well, of course, Day in Tech History, uh, which is over at dayintechhistory.com. And the new website, which is how to record podcasts over at howtorecordpodcasts.com. Very cool. So what I'm trying to do here is, there we go. Can I do that? Probably not. What I wanted to do is show, I guess we'll show show off the video cameras here when we uh, uh, when I switch to you as presenter. But uh, we're doing something unique today. I'm, uh, I'm up here. Uh, I have my uh, laptop. Actually, not my laptop, but my iPad running with, uh, with GoToMeeting. I'm actually in a session with GoToMeeting in my iPad and have it up on the desktop as well. So we're going to show you something real cool here in a minute. But uh, I want to thank GoToMeeting for being a, a longtime sponsor here of the uh, of the Tech Podcast Roundtable. We've got uh, great information to share with you and, and some some very cool demo to give today as well. So Jeffrey, uh, how you been? What's what's been going on with you and how you've been using GoToMeeting? Well, on Monday, I, I, well, like I said, I have the show iPad three sixty five, and on Monday, what I did was I actually highlighted. The newest feature of uh, GoToMeeting, and that is the fact that you can now host a meeting from the iPad. Uh, of course, you could have hosted from a, a Mac or a PC, but you could have only joined using a smartphone or a tablet. Now, other smartphones and tablets, you still have to, you can still have the, you still have the join only availability, but now you have the ability to actually host, start a meeting uh, using the iPad. So I go through the steps on how to how to join, uh, set up the meeting and host the meeting and uh, use a couple computers on there so because you know we all know that you know meetings are essential to the way that we work we uh, share ideas we problem solve we develop creative solutions uh, but when you know when somebody like todd is in hawaii basking in the sun and i'm in wisconsin freezing my patuka off then uh, it, it's it's hard to actually meet with people unless you have a program like go to meeting with hd faces it's the powerfully simple way to meet and collaborate online. And no matter where anyone is located, uh, of course, GoToMeeting will let you share the same uh, screen, making it easy to be on that same page. And with that built-in HD video conferencing, you can see each other face-to-face -face so everybody can see eye-to-eye. -eye. And, of course, like I said, you can host a meeting from PC, from Mac, or now from your iPad you can host a meeting. And you can join a meeting from any type of smartphone tablet in the iOS devices or the Android devices, and, of course, uh, uh, PC and Mac. So basically, give it a try. I mean, we're giving 30-day 30 30 day trials away. Simple as that. Put it into your business toolbox. Try GoToMeeting for free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit GoToMeeting.com. Click that Try It Free button Now button. That's the orange button on the page. Enter in the code PODCAST. And, uh, of course, if you remember the code podcast because that helps us keep our lights on and it supports uh, tech podcasts in the roundtable. And we thank you very, very much for that. 
And of course, we think go to meeting because meeting is believing. And that's so true. Hey, Jeffrey, did you see here that I was uh, actually bringing the go to meeting session on my iPad into the actual go to meeting session? <laughs> so, what we actually have here, for those of you that are actually uh, the, the watching the video, is this is the live video that is actually on my iPad. So, you can see that uh, I'm I'm waving at the camera here, and uh, it's this is the iPad down here, and then up here is my actual desktop. So this is really slick, and you know you can you can host a meeting from here too. It used to be you could only attend, but now you can actually drive the uh, drive the bus and actually do your presentation right here. And if you if you want to go into full presentation mode and you want to be able to, you can actually squeeze it so that you don't have to see the folks on the video no more, but, uh, yeah. it really works out well. It's, it's a great way to, uh, to hold a meeting when you don't, when you're not from your PC and it's, it's slick, but, uh, yeah. I, I've been, I've used it. I used it. I actually had a meeting in a, in a parking lot and uh, the yeah. gal wanted to go over something right away. And I'm like, I need to show you this document. And she says, Oh, well, we can wait to get back to the office. I said, Oh no, 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 we can, we can do this right now. And it, it worked out well. So, uh, and, so, and the best part, the best part is you could attach to your Dropbox or they have, uh, uh, Citrix does have, I can't remember the name of it, file share or something like that, right. uh, that their personal cloud that you can actually get a, a account with and then, uh, share all your files on. So you don't have to have everything on your iPad, yep. which is really nice. Yeah. And you can send that, send that file right from the cloud to the guest. I mean, it's, it's slick. It really is. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really impressed with what they, they've upped their game here. Uh, considerably. So, uh, hey, definitely, as Jeffrey said, go over to gotomeeting.com, click that try a free button and use the promo code podcast. Get a free 30-day trial. If if nothing else, you're going to be like, wow, I can do this now. I don't have to be, I can just carry my iPad with me. It's, it's, it is, it's slick. Hey, what I want to do is, I think what we'll do today is, I think I'll start and get my part of the presentation um, and what, what I really, and Jeff, what Jeffrey's going to do is he's going to talk about the actual blog post, the, when you do your actual, uh, blog post for your, for your podcast. But I, I want to talk about some stuff and, you know, I've had advantage here. I've been, uh, able to look at a lot of sites. We just got done with the podcast awards, uh, voting just finished up last week. And I was, I had some deep insight into what people are doing on their sites, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. And, and I just want to kind of highlight a couple of things that were important. Now, you can see that right here on my site that I have loaded up at geeknewscentral.com, I'm actually logged into the dashboard. But if I um, log out, let me go ahead and log out and show you my default page load here. I'll go back to the actual website itself. Um, when people come to my webpage, they know almost immediately that they can consume content or subscribe to content on the website. One of the biggest challenges we found and, and saw during the review of sites on the podcast award site was I had to hunt and peck and, and dig oftentimes to try to find people's RSS feeds. And if you see on the screen in, in my, on my website here, you know, the, the simple ability to subscribe to the show is, is nothing more than, you know, basically clicking on the RSS feed or clicking on the iTunes link. And it's very apparent that they can subscribe to the show. After all, we want people to subscribe. But it's, it's amazing how many people are creating great content, yet you, you just can't subscribe to the podcast at all. And another thing I make available on my website is I make it available so that they can play immediately. Now, I'm a we have uh, writers at Geek News Central that write articles, so sometimes my podcast is not right up on the front page. It's, it's, it may be down further because it's farther than farther down in the article stack, but I've got the ability so that people can, um, can basically load and, and play my show, uh, real easily. And let me, let me bring over the little player that popped up when I clicked the play button. It's Thursday, November 15th, and you're listening to the geek at geek. So News just, Central, just the that, longest continuous, just that quick, they can play my show and, if you notice here, again, I'm, I'm down on the play button. When I click the play button, it loads the player in a separate window. 
So when they go it's off, Thursday, and look November at, 15th, look at another and you're site, listening to the Geek at the Geek News the Central, actual, the longest continuous well, running shut that off. tech podcast. This is show number 817. Okay, so you can see that by having it open up in a new tab, it gives people the ability to continue to surf on and do something else at the same time that they're listening to your show. And that's that's really important because if they have the player on the site and they leave your page, it, it's it's just going to shut off. Um, and you know, I'm a video podcaster as well. We're creating a video today with this show. And one thing that I had a hard time finding on a lot of these video podcaster websites was I said, oh, wow, they got a video. That's very cool. Or how do I subscribe to it? Well, they would have maybe the YouTube embed on the page, but I want to get their show so I can subscribe to it and actually carry it with me on my iPad or my, on my iPhone. And I could never find their subscribe link to their video feed. So that's another thing that I have on my site very clearly marked is the video RSS feed. And I create a mobile and a high def video um, RSS feed so that they can you basically, if they're watching on their desktop, they can get the HD version. If they're on the mobile, they can do that. And I've also got the video feed link right up on the website as well. So I make it easy to subscribe, you see a theme here, folks. Be making it easy to subscribe to stuff, um, you know. And it, it was really discouraging to have to dig and try to find where this information was at on on a variety of different websites. You know, it's hard to believe, but sixty one percent who had a visible iTunes subscription on their page, iTunes link, thirty nine percent did not. Why would you? You know, the number one. Basically, the number one consumption device is the iPad and the i and the and the iPhone. And why would you not allow someone to subscribe to your show um, through that? Uh, you know, through the front page. Now, I want to demo something here, um, and, and I'm going to bring myself out of go to meeting mode on my iPad, and I'm just going to load my my browser here, and I'm I'm going to bring this into the main screen so you can see this. So I've loaded my iPad up. And you notice I've, I've got everything here set up so that I can, you know, I basically can read my website. But I want to show you something that's very cool. Now, this is how easy it is for people to get subscribed to your show when they are, you know, on your website with an, with an iPad. Um, okay, I want to subscribe. Make, to, uh, hey, Todd? Yeah. You should, make, you should make the iPad presenter so I can uh, show it for you. I, I probably should do that. This is kind of quicker. So let me just show this oh, okay. real quick here. Um. So if I click on the GNC special media events RSS feed, the iPad is smart enough and, the, and iTunes and, and then basically the iOS 6 is smart enough so that when I click this, it's going to automatically load the podcasting app. So I'm just going to say subscribe to podcast. Yes, of course I want to subscribe. So what it has done now, it's adding the Geek News Central special media feed. So now I'm with one click, I'm subscribed within the device itself. So when you have and you look in your stats and you see these large number of listeners that are coming to your website via a mobile device, are you really making it easy for them to subscribe to your show? Now, that type of simple functionality is not built into Android, but there's apps within Android, if you have it loaded, that make subscribing just as easy. So, you know, have those visible icons where people can subscribe and, and get access to your content and make it so that they keep coming back, even though they may have forgot about it initially. If they've subscribed, when they load their podcasting app, they're going to say, oh man, I subscribed to that show. Another thing that we had a challenge with was actually finding a, um, a way to contact the show host. And one thing I've got right on my site, it says important links. And I've got in there stuff like show advertising, my insider program that basically draws people in to, to donate to the show. I've got access to some tech magazines that we make available. And I also have a link here for my contact email. So basically, all they have to do is click on that link, and it's going to load their email program and make it easy for people to contact me on the show. It's real important that when someone is listening and they say, man, I want to send Todd a, a, a comment about something I just heard, that, that they're able to do that. Now, one thing you'll see on my site and that you'll also see on Jeffrey's site is his says send voicemail. And all you have to do if you want to give con uh, uh, feedback on Jeffrey's show, you just click on the send voicemail button and it uses the microphone that you have and you can, you can send a recording. 
You can say, hey, Jeffrey, I thought that the demo that you did on GoToMeeting on your iPad 365 show the other day was fantastic. And when that's sent, that makes it into Jeffrey's inbox. And what he does then is he will maybe play that uh, comment on his next show on the feedback that he got from you. So this is a way for the listener to interact. And on mine, I have it, it says send comments. I retitled mine. So it's the same exact um, uh, widget. And this comes from some folks over at SpeakPipe. But the main thing is if you're creating content, you want this interaction with your host and you want them to, or your listeners, and you want them to be able to easily um, connect with you. Only 21% of the shows that we reviewed had a, a call-in number or a widget on their site that they could use. Now, luckily, a lot of people are buying their own .coms and getting on their own branded websites with WordPress or whatever type of uh, um, a content management system they're using. But a lot of sites are still on non-branded pages, uh, basically that load at someone else's um website like uh, my show name at dot libsyn.com you know and basically that takes you over to that third party site that they own you may have an account over there but you know if you ever get this if ever want to move and, and graduate to your own site you know you're going to have this legacy information over on that site that's going to be hard to to move into your own dot com so we tell people make sure you don't lock yourself into another company's ecosystem, make sure that you have your own .com, you have your own templates, your own branding on your website. And it's really, really important. 28% um, of the shows that basically we reviewed did not have a Facebook link on their webpage. Now, if you look on my site, you got a place here where you can tweet. If you scroll down, there's a place here where you can connect via Facebook. And more importantly, when someone comes to my website on a Google search, and actually, you can't see the widget because we're on a smaller screen here. Um, if we were on, let's see if I can minimize this so you can actually see that. Let me, let me move this. I don't know if I can do it. Maybe I can. There it is. You can see I moved the screen over a little bit. You can see that I've got a place where people can tweet, like, Google+, connect to my LinkedIn account, or submit to Reddit. So they've got it so that they can interact with the show and promote stuff that they think was cool, um, you know, during the actual um, podcast and actually within the actual show notes. I'm sure Jeffrey's going to go into some of this stuff. But again, 28% did not have a way for them to connect with Facebook, Twitter, and so forth. Um, and here's another thing. Many of the sites were not mobile ready. You know, 69% of the sites that we visited with a mobile device, you, you get, look like scrambled eggs when we loaded their pages. So there's lots of things that you can do to make your website a lot better. And I've got more details and information on all the statistics that we found. And let me show you where to go. If you just load your browser up and you go over to podcastconnect.com, there's going to be a video on the page that is going to say, they're going to talk about the Slate announcement, the 8th Annual Podcast Award Slate announcement. And in this, I go into all of these gory details of the things that we found during the actual um, during the actual review process. And I think if you're a podcaster or thinking about becoming a podcaster, you're going to want to watch that. I'll have a link to this um, in the show notes, so definitely check that out. But there's lots more stuff that you can do. And again, there's, I'm not going to spend an hour going through each point, point by point. But if you watch the Slate review, you're going to be able to get a better insight into exactly what, uh, um, exactly what we found on other sites. So at this point, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over to Jeffrey at, uh, at Geekazine. And well, first of all, first of all, a couple, couple good points here. Uh, Go ahead. Um, if, if you need a, if you need to uh, create a mobile version of your website, there is a plugin out there called WP Touch that will let you. Uh, it'll just create a mobile theme for you, and you don't even need to worry about it. So it's it's just literally just putting in a plugin to make make uh, make put bring compliance to to your website. So I went right to the uh, website. I guess they got a pro version and a free version of this. 
And yep, it, the it, pro version will let you uh, customize a little bit better and put ads and stuff like that into it. So there so, you go. Yeah. It's it's no harder than loading a, a plug-in, right? Exactly. It's no excuse. Now the other thing was the other thing was you were talking about uh, the legacy uh, programs. I, I actually uh, on how to record podcast dot com. I actually did a blog post on how to remove your old iTunes stuff, and it came from the fact that somebody asked me a question. They said I just moved off of Lisbon to my own dedicated uh, servers and I had to recreate my own, uh, I had to recreate uh, RSS feeds because I couldn't transfer them over because they were pointed to legacy um, areas. And I, I felt bad for the guy. So it's like, you know, I'd love to be able to help you because um, of all those viewers you just lost because you had to change your RSS over to a different location. So you basically give them insight on how they can fix that and, uh, and make that transition yeah. without losing folks. That's that's that was probably a real good piece. Well, no, 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 no. I I I showed him how he could remove his old iTunes oh. stuff, but he basically lost his uh, whoever he had. If they had subscribed to iTunes, it's it was pretty much a dead feed at that point. You know, and that's what's you know it's sad sometimes when people are just getting started. They don't know where to go. They look at something that's easy, and you know if and they say, okay, this will be real easy. Then three months later, they're like, man, I wish I wasn't here. Because I am trying to build my own brand, um, yeah. You know, and that goes. Sometimes, within... sometimes it's sometimes it's that way. The other times it's it's they change the rules on you, and next right. thing you know, what you could do before you can't do now. So I've always said, own your own dot com, own your own entity, and control it. It's most important. All right, let's go ahead and make Jeffrey presenter. What I'm going to do is I've got a little control panel here, and all it does is it pulls down and says, make him presenter, and with a quick swoosh, it's going to allow him to to take over the the controls and he's going to share his screen and then i'm gonna what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna, I'm gonna i've got because i'm using a split screen deal let me uh, uh drag this over and put this up but boom so as you can see now that jeffrey's presenter um i can either minimize his post and watch his facial expressions or I can uh, go ahead and, and I want to pay attention to everything he's going to say and uh, do it. But you can see the, the HD faces. So again, this is down on the down on the iPad, and then this one here is up on the webcam. So <laughs> um, let me go ahead and, and and maximize this. Jeffrey, go ahead, rock and roll. Now you should be seeing my screen that says write a blog post to compliment your podcast. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, today what we're going to do is we're going to tell you about what you need to do, uh, why why it's important, and 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 everything to uh, make your make a post and 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 put it into your own blog, whether it, whether it be on a, on your website or or a blogspot.com or or whatnot. Um, it, it's it's important to do that because not only will you gain searchability, you'll also gain unique content. For people when they start looking for things and, and searching on things, then they can come to you. Uh, you look for community. People find your web page and say, hey, I like this page. I'm going to stick around and talk a little bit. And then, of course, you, you create visual stimulation, whether it be on a video or a picture or, or, or your website itself and how it looks. Now, one thing that you got to keep in mind, podcasts cannot survive on just iTunes alone unless you're super popular. You know, if you're Adam Carolla, you could probably do it. But even Adam Carolla has his own website. The description of your show is not searchable. So if, if you do episode 326, I talk to God, and somebody says, I want to find out who talked to God in search, they're not going to find it. All there, but if they say uh, Joe's podcast, they might find that because all it's showing is the, dis the main description of your podcast, not the individual episodes. So that's one big reason why you should have content in your blog post when you post your podcast, whether it be an audio or a video version. Because if you say, today I talked to God, or I talked to the President of the United States, or I talked to Mark Cuban, or I, well, whoever, and somebody's doing that search, they can find it through that individual episode. Now, here's some goals to uh, posting a podcast episode, some things that you want to keep in mind when you do that, because you want to have something with a lot of meat and potatoes in it. Because if you don't have the meat and potatoes and you just write one line saying, I talk 
to Mark Cuban, it's probably not going to even be searched at. So basically, you want to have about 150 to 200 words in your episode that you talk about. And it's really not that difficult to write about 150 to 200 words. Um, you want to have important links to your content. You want to have possible backlinking to your own page. You want to have proper tagging in your posts, uh, the, the, the tags that you put in there. And, and don't just say IBM or Mark Cuban or anything like that. Uh, have, have more unique tags like uh, interview of Mark Cuban. Because when people search, they, still, they don't search on just a name. They search on a, an actual phrase. Um, you want to have one to two images inside your post, including your feature image which should at least be 720 by 480, although some people do a little bit larger than that. And then, of course, the proper tagging of those images. Like, for instance, I create an image for iPad 365 every single time. And when I create that image, I give it a name. And I don't say, uh, like, for instance, I just got done with episode 195. I don't say, I don't say 195.jpg. I say 195 space um, yap space app for ipad.jpg because when somebody searches they're going to they're going to find that in the images as well which we'll talk about in a second here the one thing that everybody misses and i miss myself from time to time is the excerpt of the show now if you go into wordpress you put in you put in your uh, you put in your post and your title and then there's a little area a little box that says put in an excerpt of what you're talking about um, what you should be doing is you should actually putting, be putting in excerpts and, and uh, write about two to three sentences. You don't want to go over like, uh, I think it's like 255 words. Um, it's important for when you post to the social networks because not all the time when, they, when you post to Facebook or anything like that, not all the time does it actually pick up the post. Sometimes I've seen some social networks where it actually puts the, the meta description of the homepage in there and it looks really really wrong because there's nothing it, it's the wrong text so by putting the excerpt in it's going to look for that excerpt and put it in and if it doesn't at that point then there's a problem with the social network that needs to fix of course but make sure that you put an excerpt in and uh, you can actually have it the first couple sentences of the post you just copy and paste it and if it as long as it's a, it has a good description in there it, it should work now I talked about backlinks, and as you see on the bottom right-hand corner, I show you one of the posts that I did for the, uh, the application I did on iPad 365 on Friday. I have two backlinks in there. The first one, I actually manually put it in. I say, hey, check out my previous iPad app that I talked about, and I talked about Path for iPad, and I put that on the bottom of each post. Um, in the app itself, I have another plugin that redirects to a page. And but the the whole idea is uh, instead of saying uh, uh, other URL dot com forward slash blah, 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 I can say geekazine dot com forward slash other URL and then it would actually redirect. Plus, it becomes a backlink to geekazine dot com because, of course, it has the geekazine dot com root to it. So these are backlinks and they actually give you better Google juice than if you were linked to outside pages. Now you're not, you shouldn't do, you shouldn't uh, mask a lot of pages. Like for instance, uh, in your show notes, you shouldn't be masking uh, uh, an article like that to uh, geekazine.com forward slash link one or something like that. It, uh, Google, Google has it out, outlined in Panda. But if you've got certain things like this or affiliate links or anything like that, that, like, for instance, I, I have an affiliate link with Roku. If you go to geekazine.com forward slash Roku, you go through my affiliate link. Simple as that. So you want to have a couple backlinks in there. You want to have a contact form in there, but you don't want to have an email address. You want to actually, and it, there are several plugins out there that you can create contact forms with. And then you can say, contact me through my contact form, and you highlight the contact form part. And you put the link, which would be, in this case, it would be geekazine.com forward slash contact. And that would actually backlink to your website where they can fill out the contact form. And with the one I have, I can actually make several different contact forms. So if I want you to contact me about Geekazine, it'll do one. If I want you to contact me about iPad 365, it'll do another. If you want to be a sponsor, so on and so forth. 
So you have these backlinks that are coming back to your website. Um, about the podcast, perfect backlink to put into your show notes. Uh, privacy policies, policies, other pages, anything that the, uh, the person really needs to know a little bit more about what your show is about, put them in as backlinks because they only help your host. Keywords. Uh, this, I, you know, I see so many, so many uh, bloggers that don't even put in keywords or the proper keywords. They put in like uh, uh, IBM. They put in like, uh, you know, one word words instead of uh, uh, big, big uh, phrases. And the key to keywords, it actually should be phrase words is, is, is a better uh, definition of this. But you want to put in specific phrases that will bring audience. Like, for instance, you know, for two years, I did a video a couple of years back on the Kodak ZI8, which was one of the big blogger cameras out there. And then when the ZI10 came out, the Play Touch, I did a comparison between the Kodak ZI8 and the Play Touch. And with those two posts, I had the amount of phrasing and keywords in there that actually brought me to the top 10 list of a search. And I, I beat out CNET, I beat out Engadget, I beat out uh, Wired and all these other big names simply because of the fact that I had the right keywords in there. And I, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not an expect, expert on keywords, but I do know that you, you need the right types of keywords um, into your uh, articles and into your, uh, onto your posts that, that bring people there. And that brought me a lot of traffic for the last couple of years and actually a lot of affiliate money because I did link to an affiliate where they could actually buy themselves a Kodak ZI8 or ZI10. Now, here's the one thing that everybody, when they create a post, they kind of forget about, and that is the comments that, that, uh, that follow from there. What you should really be saying is, hey, I want you to come to my website. I want you to watch my show, and then I want you to comment on my show. And some people, uh, some, blog, uh, some blog posts or, or websites have it set up so the uh, comments section is not driven by WordPress. It's driven by Facebook. It's driven by uh, third-party companies like Live Fire and, uh, and Discuss and, and uh, other companies like that. So, but it does bring an open communication and people will comment on your posts. But, and when you, they do that, you also have to remember that if they, if they comment to you, you've got to reply to those comments because it does two things. First of all, it makes them realize that you're actually reading what they're saying and then they become more interactive with you. And it also bumps up your number. One, one comment becomes two comments. And those comments can be searchable inside of Google and can bring you even more traffic. Now, this is mostly for video podcasters. But you know, even with an audio, if you use, let's say you use Blog Talk Radio. Let's say you use Vimeo. Let's say you use Blip. Let's say whatever the whatever the third party intervention is, then when you're posting to that to put the information into your website, you want to at least have some description to their website, including on their website, including links to your website. So, and, and with YouTube, which by the way, YouTube is the, the second uh, search uh, the, out of the top 10 search engines. YouTube is number two in search engines. So you want to have at least 64 unique words. And, then, and what I mean by that is you don't copy and paste what's in your post and put it on YouTube. You want to type in something totally different. You want to have links to your website, Twitter, and Facebook. Like, for instance, on, my, on iPad 365, I always say go to iPad-365.com for the link. Uh, Twitter is uh, geek, or I'm sorry, Twitter.com forward slash iPad 365. And Facebook is Facebook.com forward slash iPad 365. It's a lot of extra typing, but I cannot tell you how many times I've looked at my statistics and saw that they actually came to my website from YouTube because that link was in there. Now, here's some uh, juicy bit tidbit of information, something that you should keep to heart. Now, they say that you have 30 seconds to convince somebody to watch or listen to your podcast. So if they hit the play button, they've got the, the first 30 seconds will deter, make them determine whether they want to continue on with your podcast and listen all the way through or watch all the way through. Same thing with blog posts. You have one paragraph 
to convince someone. In some cases, you don't even have a paragraph to convince somebody to actually decide to watch or listen to your podcast. So it's kind of a double-edged sword now. So they read the first paragraph and they say, yeah, I want to watch or listen. And then they got 30 seconds to watch or listen to say, I want to continue. But at least they've got that option to go from one to the next to the next. And that does bring more traffic, believe it or not. Then this is uh, this is perfect. It's exactly what Todd is saying about the website in general. Don't make people hunt for, on your website because if they have to hunt for a link, if they have to hunt for uh, to go somewhere, they're just going to find the exit. And that's actually the easiest link of them all because it's on the upper, upper top hand corner of this of the screen, right for PC, left for Mac. Simple as that. I am a I'm a big person of not saying oh I I, I uh, how is how is somebody else doing things but sometimes you just have to do it. Sometimes the best way to see how successful podcasts are doing it is to visit their website and try to understand why they do it that way. Um, we had a big conversation in our uh, in our groups at Tech Podcasts because people were putting uh, putting images into their MP3 files that were way too large because they, they read that, uh, that iTunes wanted a 14 by, 1400 by 1400 image, but that was for the description image rather than the ID3 tag. So everybody was putting a way humongous uh, uh, image file in there when they could have just put in something a little bit smaller. Um, and so sometimes you just have to go to the other websites and see how they're doing it, how they're, how they're putting together their MP3 tags and understand why they're putting in their MP3 tags. In this case, it's to pretty much appease any type of MP3 player because uh, older MP3 players, uh, anything maybe 10 years ago, probably will get tripped up by whatever image is in there. But anything eight years ago will accept a smaller image, but anything larger, they'll just get completely tripped up. So you want to you wanna be able to have that information in there. You want to have your, be your best foot forward, but you also want to be able to let other people that aren't up on the mate on the newest technology be able to see or watch watch or listen to your show because that accounts for a lot of your traffic. Now, uh, one thing that a lot of people have asked me, I I actually put on my blog post, I actually put my media at the top of the post. I put the audio and the video file on it. With Blueberry PowerPress, it's very easy. It's actually just a, a, a checkbox. Do you want it on top or do you want it on bottom? I put it on top because the way I see it is everybody comes to my website by seeing uh, through Facebook, seeing through Google Plus what, my pod, what the podcast is about. I want them to be invited by seeing the media first and then the blog post second because they've already read the description on that. If they want to continue to read on, they can scroll down a little bit. I know some people that put together blog posts that are six, 700 words in length. And that means that that media is way down on the bottom. You actually have to scroll down a half a page just to get to the media. And there's a lot of people that will not travel that far just for the media. All they'll do is they'll see that it's not there. And then once again, they'll find the exit. So I always would like to make sure that my media is on top. Now, there's arguments for both. And this is my this is just my preference. So just see what your traffic is doing. If people if you put it on the bottom and people aren't clicking on your media, try putting it on the top and see if that changes anything. And if they are or if they're not, then vice versa. Uh, reverse it again. Pictures are very important in any blog post and unique pictures are even more important. Like I said, you know, the old adage, pictures are worth a thousand words. And it takes one picture to explain better than what you can say. And you might not be the best uh, wordsmith out there. And that's okay. If you have a picture that goes with it, people can kind of, will kind of forgive you a little bit and see what the, what the thing is about. Like for instance, in this picture, you know, my show is iPad 365. You know, I, I'm the host of it. And it looks like the application that I'm talking about is Yap. Simple as that. I'm just uh, uh, that's something I'd be interested in, so I'll click on it. And if I'm not totally interested, in it, I can read a little bit and say, okay, now I want to watch it. So I know a lot of you are not 
graphic artists or anything like that out there this is this is actually just straightforward uh simple uh photoshop stuff which i talk about i actually have an article over on how to record podcast.com how to create images and uh for youtube now that they've opened up the image option you can uh, you can do that that way as well and, and and put in unique images which will bring you more views and listens and pictures are also searchable content like i said before in this case i don't just say 195.jpg because that will never never be found but if i say 195 yap app for ipad and when somebody's doing a search they'll go over to the images side and they might see that image within the first couple rows finally grammar does count you know you, you just learn a little bit i mean you don't like i said you don't have to be a wordsmith you don't have to be uh, a, a grammar aficionado however if your grammar is completely atrocious then people might start to leave so and here's a simple little tip we all know people we met people around our lives i i know somebody that actually is a, is a, a teacher and i've actually asked her i don't ask her to come to every single article and write and and correct my grammar but i've asked her is on very important articles can you take a look at it can you tell me what's right and what's wrong and, and how i can fix it and most likely and most times they just say yeah we'll, we'll we'll take five minutes and go through it and and get out you know the the big problems like for instance i used to use commas all wrong i i used them i used them a lot and since then i've i've uh, reduced my comma count my punctuation and a lot more people have been enjoying the articles that i've written because i i've i've made that major change so it's just sometimes it's just the little things that that bring even more traffic and that's pretty much it i mean there's a lot more that we could talk about with this but uh the bottom line is these are the things that you need to, to think about when writing a post for your podcast for your audio or vi video podcast and if you're not even doing these things and you're wondering why you're getting five views a week or something like that on your show this is why it's it's as simple as that that was good that was nice that was, that was a nice presentation i think you uh summed up uh, a lot of the stuff that uh, i have concerns about uh, all the time so that that that's a good one so jeffrey um you know what are you seeing then as as people are you know are you seeing a difference when you put your your video or your audio on top are you finding that for your site at least you're getting uh you're getting more traffic that way the one thing that I'm finding is that uh, I the audio and the video are pretty much right next to each other. Uh huh. Um, they are they are they are clicking on the audio version first, and then they'll they'll turn around and they'll like what they hear, and then they'll they'll flip over to the video. So in my case, where I have a dual media on the top, this actually helps even more because the audio will load in under a second. Right. Whereas the video will take uh, will take a little bit longer to load. There was actually a survey done too that said if a video doesn't start playing within the first two seconds, you start losing people immediately. And yeah. uh, if you if if it's go much longer than like uh, twelve or fifteen seconds, you're, you're done. There they are, they are no longer uh, they're no longer listening. So yeah, I may have to try that. I may have to try putting them up on top for a little bit and see how it uh, how it works out. Yeah. Well, folks, this is going to wrap us up for this edition of the uh, Tech Podcast Roundtable. We want to thank Citrix Cody Meeting for being a sponsor here. And uh, don't forget to get over to techpodcast.com and uh, check out all the content over there. We've got a great lineup of, of hosts. They're doing a variety of different shows. Mike Tech Show, Google Glance, Gadget Professor, BAMcast, Unboxing, Unboxing Live, uh, the Tech of Sports, uh, Lou Trek Show, just to name a few. And all these are shows that have been up new in the last couple of days. And uh, definitely come over to the website and check it out. Of course, I want to encourage you to check out my show as well over at geeknewscentral.com. Uh, getting ready for CES here. We just had a meeting a little while ago today talking about CES. So we're in planning modes for that. And uh, all that content is going to be over at uh, tpn.tv. So uh, if you, as you're getting ready to uh, head into the new year and looking for some fresh content, the tpn.tv site is coming alive. We're starting to do host introductions now and so that people know who's actually going to be participating out there. Jeffrey's going to be one of our team members out in Vegas. 
So, Jeffrey, uh, I know that you've booked your uh, you booked your airline tickets. Uh, are you ready for uh, Are you ready for Vegas? Once again, I love it. Uh, we've got well, we got a lot of different things going on uh, uh, in in not just CES, but a couple other shows as well. I know you you're going to be doing the podcast awards that uh, that Tuesday night, and I actually got invited to a different uh, show a couple days earlier, which I'll probably uh, and attend for a couple hours. Yeah, that's that. Is that that storage show where they're doing the? I think there's a yeah yeah. There's a new media expos going on that same, well, just right before CES. So lots of stuff going on right after the new year. But uh, I uh, this this show was put together right uh, before Thanksgiving. So if you're watching this, uh, enjoy your Thanksgiving. If you're watching after, I hope you had a good one. But uh, this is content that really lives forever. So we hope that you'll uh, share the information with folks. Make sure they come over and, and check us out. And basically all the articles for the Tech Podcast Roundtable is, is on the blog at uh, blogdoctechpodcast.com. Jeffrey and I, this is our 15th uh, roundtable this year. And uh, we look forward. And we, got one, we got at least one more this uh, next month, right? Yeah, I think we've got one more next month. So we want to thank all of you for attending. And uh, again, if you have comments on today's show, tech at techpodcast.com. And of course, you can find Jeffrey over at geekazine.com. And of course, your other sites too, right? Yep. Yeah, including Day in Tech History and... Uh, and how to record podcasts. If you if you want uh, to learn a little bit more about recording a podcast, go over there and uh, set up some time with me. And we'll have the 24-hour podcast on December 15th, and uh, that should be a lot of fun as well. So lots of stuff going on in December and January. But uh, until next time, everyone, thanks for hanging out with me here and Jeffrey at uh, this edition of the Tech Podcast Roundtable. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.